In this video, I'm going to go over assignment 13.2. On number one, it asks us to find the arithmetic mean of 5 and 20. That's just the mean that you are used to up to geometry, where you add the two numbers and divide by two since there were two numbers. So 5 plus 20 is 25, and 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. So that's just the average is all that means. Add and divide by how many pieces of data you have. Now to find the geometric mean is different. So remember, um, to find the geometric mean, our definition says x is the geometric mean if it can be found by taking the square root of the product. So in other words, we could set up the proportion where the unknown value will be multiplied together when we cross multiply. So we have that x in two different places, one time in the denominator and one time in the numerator. So when we cross multiply, x times x is x squared, and then we have 5 times 20, uh, just times 20. So 5 times 20 is 100, so you can see we're taking the square root of the product of the two numbers given, and that's what geometric mean is. So x is 10. So 5 times 20 is 100, and the square root of that is the geometric mean of 5 and 20. Number three says use the labels on the diagram and which proportions below are true. So remember, if the proportion is true, the ratios are consistently set up in the same way. So if I look at choice A, B over X, B and X are both sides of what I would call the medium triangle. B is across from the right angle, so it is the hypotenuse. And X is the long leg of the two, so X is the long leg. So if this is a correct proportion, Y and B would have to be the hypotenuse and long leg of another triangle. Well, here is Y and here is B. They're not even sides of the same triangle. B is a side of the large one and the medium one, but Y is only a side of the small triangle. So this ratio does not even make sense. So A is not one of our answers. On B, A and B are both sides of the large triangle. A is the short leg, and B is the long leg. They make up that right angle together. So we have a short leg over long leg ratio. So Y and X would have to be the short and long leg of another triangle. But you can see Y is the side of the small triangle. It's the short leg. And X is a long leg of the medium triangle. But they're not from the same triangle together. So again, that proportion does not make sense. On C, H over X, H and X are both sides of the medium triangle. They make up the right angle together, so they're legs. H is the short leg, and X is the long leg. So Y and X would have to be the short leg and long leg of another triangle, and they are the small triangle. Y is the short leg, H is the long leg. They make the right angle together. So since those were consistently set up in the same way, using two different triangles, C is correct. On D, B over X, B and X are both sides of the medium triangle. B is across from the right angle, so it's the hypotenuse. X is one of the legs, and it's the longer of the two. H is the short one. And so this would have to be the hypotenuse and long leg of another triangle. Well, X plus Y is this whole side, and it is across uh, from a uh, right angle, so it is a hypotenuse of the large triangle. So it's a hypotenuse, and B is the long leg of the large triangle. So it is set up in the same consistent manner, so D is also a correct proportion. On the last one, A and Y both come from the small triangle. A is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Y is the short leg. So we have hypotenuse over short leg. And as long as this hypotenuse over short leg of another triangle, it's set up consistently. Well, X plus Y is this whole side across from that right angle. So it is a hypotenuse of the large triangle and A is the short leg of that large triangle. So this is a good proportion as well. On numbers four through six, finding the values of X, Y, and H, it's important for you to notice that the large triangle is a right triangle with two congruent legs. So it's an isosceles right triangle. So we know that we can solve for this missing hypotenuse of that right triangle by just using the Pythagorean theorem. So remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared means a and b are the legs, so those are both eights, 
and we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So we have 64 and 64 making 128 for our c squared. And so c is the square root of 128. Remember to always simplify your fractions when they will. The largest perfect square factor of 128, if you're not um, familiar with that, you remember you can go to your y equals and type in 128 divided by x and then look in your table by pressing second graph and you can see all the numbers that multiply to get um, 128. Of course, even though one's a perfect square, it's not going to simplify my radical. But the next factor pair, 2 and 64, 64 is a perfect square. So I can rewrite 128 as 2 times 64 and take the square root of the 64, bringing it out as an 8. So this whole side is 8 square roots of 2. Now, it's not one of my answers, but it will certainly um, help me find x and y because I know since this is an altitude, it comes from a vertex and is perpendicular to the opposite side, that in an isosceles triangle, when you have one of your special segments from the vertex angle, it's actually all four of them. So it's an angle bisector, it's an altitude, it's a perpendicular bisector, so these parts are congruent. Um, it has all of those um, special um, segments that we've talked about. So knowing these are congruent and have to add it to be 8 squared to 2 tells me what x and y both are. All we have to do is take 8 squared to 2 and divide it by 2. Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So x and y are both 4 square roots of 2, which is letter C on both of these. So now I can find h just focusing on one of these right triangles. I know this leg is 4 square root of 2. I do not know that leg, but I know the hypotenuse of that triangle is 8. So I would have leg squared, so 4 square root of 2 squared, plus the other leg squared, which is my h, is equal to my hypotenuse squared. Now a lot of students get confused with this right here. Um, remember, when you square a number, it simply means you're multiplying it times itself. So when you're multiplying with radicals, the number outside will multiply together. So 4 times 4 is 16. And the numbers inside will multiply together, so that becomes the square root of 4. But the square root of 4, 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is simply 2. So you have 16 times 2, so that simplifies to 32. You could also simply put that in your calculator. Just make sure you put the 4 square roots of 2 in parentheses and write arrow out of that before you close your parentheses and square it and you will see that we do get 32 just like we knew we should. So 32 plus 8 squared is equal to 8 squared which is 64. So subtracting the 32 from both sides gives me 8 squared equals 32. So h is the square root of 32 which again will simplify. The largest perfect square factor of 32 is 16. 32 is 16 times 2 take the square root of 16 and bring it out as a 4. So, just like x and y, h is also 4 square roots of 2. We didn't even have to use a proportion on any of that. Now, on number 7, we will need to use um, our proportional reasoning and that geometric mean that we've been talking about. So it says paleontologists, which are scientists who study prehistoric life through fossils, have found potentially interesting bones in a remote area and plan for a site dig. The site is 12 miles due south from Juneau and 16 miles due west of Carmen. Here's our site. The scientists will need lots of equipment, so they need a dirt road to connect the site to the highway between Carmen and Juneau in the most direct way. How far from Juneau, here's Juneau, should the dirt road exit the highway? And here's where it's exiting the highway. So this is our unknown. This is what we're trying to find from Juno to where the dirt road exits um, the highway. So your hint is to find the distance between Juno and Carmen first. And we've talked about that with all of our problems that we should begin by using the Pythagorean theorem to find this whole length right here. So we would have 12 squared plus 16 squared, since those are the legs, equals C squared. 12 squared plus 16 squared is 400 and so c is simply the square root of 400. 
400 is a perfect square. When you take the square root, you simply get 20. So, in other words, this is the famous Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5, that has been multiplied by 4. 3 times 4, 4 times 4, 5 times 4. So, that is 20. Doesn't give me my answer yet, but it helps me set up my proportion now. So, to find x, x is a side of the smallest triangle here. It's the short leg, and the only other side we know of the small triangle is the 12, which is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to set up my ratios as short leg over hypotenuse. So I would have x over 12. Now I wouldn't want to use the medium triangle because all I know of it is the um, hypotenuse. I don't know its short leg. It's unknown. So I'm going to use the largest triangle because I know all three sides of it. But remember, I'm writing short leg over hypotenuse. So the largest triangle, the short leg is 12. The hypotenuse is my 20. There's that repeated number that we expect. It's not the x this time. It's a number, but it's still um, what we would expect. So multiplying across 20 times x is 20x, and 12 times 12 is 140. So to find my x, I'm simply dividing 144 by 20, and it is a terminating decimal. It is 7.2, 7.2 miles. So this is 7.2 miles. Number eight asks, how long will the dirt road connecting the site and the highway be? And so that is this um, segment right here. You actually have two ways that you could find this answer. You could set up a proportion, or you could simply use the Pythagorean theorem now on this medium triangle. If you do the Pythagorean theorem and you miss this side, you're off obviously going to miss this number too. So just know that you're running that risk if you solve using um, that 7.2 that you came up with. So leg squared plus leg squared equals 12 squared. That's one way that you could solve. So we could do 12 squared, um, which is 144, minus 7.2 squared. Oops. And that is 92.16. And take the square root of that. <coughs> Excuse me, which is 9.6. So that's one way to get the correct answer of 9.6 miles, which is B. The other way would be to set up a proportion. So to find Y, it's a side of the small triangle and the medium triangle. And so I could use those um, two to set up a proportion. <coughs> I would still have to use the 7.2, so that really doesn't solve my, that issue for me. Because I couldn't use um, Y and the 12, because that would be the long leg and the hypotenuse. Um, well, I guess I could. We could do that. Um, long leg and the hypotenuse. So we would have y over 12, long leg over hypotenuse. So I could use the large triangle, long leg over hypotenuse without using the 7.2. So again, that's long leg over hypotenuse, long leg over hypotenuse of the largest triangle. So now cross multiplying to solve, I'd have 20y equals 12 times 16, which is 192. And then dividing both sides by 20 gives me the same answer of 9.6. And I didn't have to use that 7.2. So, you know, if you use a number you came up with, you're just always running the risk of missing two answers instead of just the one. But that is 13.2.